Funding for the interview show is provided by Lagunitas, Beer Speaks, People Mumble, except on the interview show. The Lagunitas Tap Room in Chicago is at 2607 West 17th Street. The kids in the hall are one of the funniest sketch comedy troops of all time, and one of their funniest characters was Buddy Cole, played by Scott Thompson. Here's my interview with Scott Thompson. But I want to go start by going way back to the kind of the beginnings of okay. the kids in the hall. And the one thing that I think I've always admired and loved so much about sketch comedy groups that grow up organically and that last for a long time is that they are founded on a shared sensibility, a yes. shared comedic sensibility, which I think even more than a band makes it seem like, God, that's, that's, the, that's the ideal. It's like friends hanging out and doing something amazing. Was it like that from the beginning that you came together and you're like, we see things the same kind of way? Yes. Yes, when we, I mean, they were all together before me. You were the last one to go. I was the home. last one, yes. And there was like eight of them before, and then uh, and when you I. You said the other five have to go. Well, three had to go. Yeah. <laughs> so the moment I joined, they quit. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what it was. They just said, we, uh, we don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> and then the moment that the kids in the hall like said that you're in, that was it for me. I mean, I swallowed the key and I was like, and I, you know, I blocked the door because I was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. This, no one else is getting in. And, uh, and that have, was it. I so, never looked back. And then once you get to know them, mm -hmm. and obviously over the years, I'm sure there's fights, there's falling oh, out. Oh, we there fought, was, yeah. There was a period where you weren't together at mm -hmm. all. And, and I hopefully will get into all that. Yeah. But what was the initial kind of spark? Like, were you guys friends? No. No, they were, like Kevin and Dave were friends, and Mark and Bruce were friends, and I was the outsider. But once you got going, did it become we like, we're, we're, we're everywhere. Yes, we, we do did. everything together. Yes, and we knew it too. Like, it wasn't very long after I joined that we knew that we were, we knew we were special. Like, we weren't, we weren't confused about it. We were kind of arrogant about it, in a way, which yeah. is very un-Canadian. And... Um, did you have a point of view? Were you reacting? We had a, we did. We all came from very, Troubled backgrounds, can we say troubled? Are you allowed to say troubled? You can't say that on public television <laughs> no. here in America. Um, you know, we all had pretty, you know, our dads were violent or, or alcoholic or both if they okay. were really, you know, um, working on it. And uh, well, they, often but, but they were ambitious, they were both. <laughs> they do go together at times. Yeah, my father was like a so sober and violent, so he was like, he was a unicorn. He's one of those, you know, like people look for those their whole life. <laughs> Other than personal family backgrounds, was there something like you were like, screw society? Cool. Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. We were very much like that. We were like a punk band. We were, we were, uh, we wanted to bring it all down. <laughs> we really did. We wanted to like really kind of like bring comedy down and uh, not bring it down, but you know, like kind of rearrange it. We were very, we, we, were, we looked around and we were like, ah, everything seemed boring, SNL. And, Second City. I know this is the home of Second City, but and Lauren Michaels produced her show. He did, but he didn't. He, but he still didn't mind if we mocked him ruthlessly, because he knew he. And he was, you know, we're kind of Lauren's secret, like you know what I mean, like his secret stash. Yeah. Like you know, he. Everyone knows him for SNL, for Saturday Night Live, but we're like his dark, dark, dirty secret, his mistress, basically, and and we were just very angry yeah. at things. And um, we were a pack. Like we used to do things like we'd go to, bar we'd go to like um, parties together and we would fan out. And we would say like, Let's, we gotta fan out, we gotta make an impact on this party, we gotta cause havoc, and then we lead to the next party. That's what we did. Yeah. And it kind of worked. Um, you kind of did that on TV too. We did, and on television we were very, you know, like, I don't know if we would, I honestly don't think that we would be, al we would be, we'd be allowed to exist today. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Because we, all right, we live in this, I'm gonna use the term politically correct. And, you can, and, it's, tr it's well, real. Well, there's two ways that people talk about it. Yes. One is, people say, everybody, there's somebody, everybody's offended by everything. They are. And then on the other hand, people say, the people who say that, the people who use that term, are just covering up the fact that there's been a lot of art or comedy or content or conversation mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it that does malign people who are powerless. Yes. 
And I, being a weak person, agree with both of those. Because you have to, because you're a straight white man. Okay. So you have to, you're not allowed to say. But I'm a of a certain age, yeah. so I can say whatever the hell I want. Which is? Because even me, like I'm, one, I'm from one of those maligned groups, right? And when I say it, it must be true because I'm sick of it. Like I'm sick, I feel, I find it patronizing in a way. It's almost like a, a golf handicap. Like I don't need a handicap. I don't need people to give me like a head start. I want to be on the same playing field as everybody else because I don't think I'm not, I, I think I'm as, I know I'm as good. So I find it, I think it's morphed and, and curdled into patronizing. And I think identity politics is, is kind of, I think, uh, separating us. And so, like, I'm a gay man who comes from a generation that really had it tough. And in this world today, which is all about who's the greater victim, my generation of gay men really suffered. So I think we have kind of a right and a responsibility to talk about this because comedy to me is a, is, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful art form that, 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 that can go anywhere. And one of the things I think about political correctness that I do find disturbing is this whole notion that's growing that there are certain areas that you shouldn't go into. And I absolutely reject that. I think that's absolute, I think that's fascist. And I don't think that's true at all. Comedy goes everywhere. And I think a lot of it is where you're coming from and just how carefully constructed your jokes are. And, and also like today we live in a world where people say, oh, just calling someone a name is a joke. That's not a joke. Jokes are carefully constructed. You know, they're mathematical. And you just have to be very, very, Precise. I mean, one of the things also about what you guys did and what you do still is that it, it was, yes, there were plenty of jokes, but you were operating, and I'm, I don't mean to just butter you up here, at a, at a much well, higher- you're supposed to. Uh, at a much higher level. Like, I mean, the sketches are, are art in a way that, and I do like SNL, but the sketches on SNL aren't, for the most part, art. Whereas- Not really. Whereas what, no. what Kids in the Hall did, you'd say, this is a piece that I think they spent a month working. Yes, that's absolutely true. We would write them, we would rehearse them, each person uh, contributed. Like nothing, you can't say any piece in the Kids in the Hall came from one person. It's impossible. Even if you thought it was perfect, when it went through, you know, that Kids in the Hall mill, it got better. Not always, sometimes it got worse, but you, you know, sometimes they would blow some of my pieces. Um, <laughs> so why, so, so why, did it, why did it end? Well, you know, our work was very, I mean, well, it ended for five years, yes. Um, why do we end television? Why do we stop, walk away? Because we hated each other really? at the time. Yeah. We were together for like, before our first breakup, it was 10 solid years of being each other's mates in a way. I mean, you couldn't even have a mate if the other kids in the hall didn't like them. Huh. And um, we, were, uh, we were obsessed with, with our work. And, and our work is very, it, it's about humans. And, and we were never about politics. We never, we almost never wrote about anything that was happening in the real world. And we were all about universal things, like universal behavior and the way human beings behave. And that will never date, because humans don't change. So I think that, you know, because of our work, you're really unearthing a lot of crap. Yeah. And we all come from pretty tough childhoods. And um, so we're very, we were very, very competitive with each other. And, and we fought like crazy, like five brothers, because I come from five brothers. So I was very comfortable. Give me a good fight. Oh man, okay. Okay, oh, this is horrible. We were writing a sketch called Joy Makers, which is one of our, I think one of our best, you know, you know Joy Makers? Yeah, with the first uh, tan, um, uh, Mark scene with uh, Tanya. Not Tanya, um, I can't remember her name. Nina. Nina, the first Nina scene. And it's, this, it's a hilarious scene. It was one of the only times that we ever wrote it together. Like we, it usually was in teams or one, et cetera. But this was the five of us. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful piece. It's like a, it's a farcical, it's like clockwork kind of a thing. But we were fighting over it. And I told Mark that I thought something he had said was stupid. And he spit on me. <laughs> I just spit on me and then I punched him. And, it turned into a brawl. <laughs> I mean, was everybody involved or just the two of you? Uh, maybe three of us. <laughs> I don't think Kevin would have gotten involved. Yeah. 
Like no one would hit Kevin. Yeah. You, you don't hit, you don't hit the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, I but never, if you have so many spritz on you, you gotta hit them. I mean, you're, you're, you're right. Yeah. You do, you yeah. do. You do. I mean, that is the worst thing anyone's ever done to me. And of course, if he were on, I'd say, and then he hit you? Yeah. Just because you spit on him? But I mean, and he'll, he'll probably say I hit him first. <laughs> Which could be true. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of man responds to a punch with a spit? <laughs> Not a spit take, a spit. So either way, in your scenario, <laughs> and you're, he loses. But I remember one time, I was so mad at Dave because he wouldn't, he kept hanging up a phone on me. Because <laughs> I was trying, it was during a very bad time. And I went over to his place. I shouldn't be laughing about, I shouldn't be laughing about something that's criminal. Um, he broke his door down. <laughs> like, you know, boom. And Who's Ow, boom! And these are disagreements over uh, comedic sketches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know, over sketches. Like, not about, like, you know, you took my wife, or you killed my father. Like, you changed a word in my sketch. I'm sure you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. Scott Thompson, everyone. Yeah.